This is a brief overview of different study designs used in research. When practicing evidence-based dentistry, we don't rely on one, but need to select the most appropriate study design to answer the question we're asking. We can think broadly of studies as being either primary research or secondary. Let's begin with primary research designs. Primary research means collecting data directly from either participants or experiments. Laboratory research, which is not done on people, helps us to understand some of the mechanisms that may be involved in causing or treating disease. It is an important precursor to doing research in the clinical environment with patients. However, from the perspective of evidence users, we generally think of laboratory research as being of fairly low value. We prefer to base our clinical decisions on research that has been conducted on people, ideally in the settings that we are encountering them. We can divide population or clinical research into that which is observational, where we just watch patients, and that which is experimental, where we intervene in some way. Observational studies include cohort, case control, cross-sectional, case series and qualitative studies. A cohort is a group of people who share a characteristic. That could be a disease such as periodontitis or oral cancer. It could also be a habit, such as smoking or exercising. It could be demographic variables, such as the year in which people are born or the year in which they graduated from university. A cohort study takes that group who share the characteristic of interest and follow them over time to see if that characteristic is associated with a particular outcome of interest. So, for example, we might follow smokers and see what proportion of them develop oral cancer or periodontal disease. However, in order to be able to start establishing a causal relationship between the characteristic and the variable, we need to have a control group who don't share the characteristic. In this case, that group is non-smokers. We then see if there is a difference in the outcome variable of interest. For example, if there is less oral cancer among the controls. Case control studies can easily be confused with cohort studies, but they start at the end rather than at the beginning. That is, Researchers identify people who have already got the disease rather than those who are exposed to a risk factor that might cause the disease. These people are known as the cases. The control group is similar in as many ways as possible to the cases, but they don't have the disease. The study then looks back in the two groups past to see if there are certain variables or risk factors associated with the cases and not the controls. So we might ask if there is anything different about people who have periodontal disease and those who don't. For example, we might ask how much they have smoked over their lifetime or what their oral hygiene habits have been. Case control studies are not as reliable as cohort studies in helping to establish causal relationships, but they can help to identify the characteristics that researchers may want to study in a cohort study. Cross-sectional studies gather data at one moment in time they do not follow patients, therefore there is no time lag, and therefore these studies are great for providing us with data on the prevalence of conditions and may even suggest associations between variables, but they cannot be used to establish causal relationships. An example of a cross-sectional study or survey would be to ask what proportion of adults smoke. Equally, we could ask what is the prevalence of oral cancer. A case series is a report of several cases who are followed over time. The cases might be people with a particular condition, or it could be people who have received a particular treatment. It will give information on how these patients progress, for example, or what the failure rate is of the intervention. The really important thing here is that there's no control, and therefore we cannot say whether one intervention is better than another, or whether people without the particular condition might also have progressed in the same way. Qualitative research is often undervalued, but can provide really rich data to help understand why people do things, how they feel, or what processes are happening in a way that quantitative research can't. There are many different qualitative study designs, but interviews, observational and documentary analysis are commonly used. So those are the different observational study types. Let's look at experimental designs. To reiterate, these study designs involve researchers intervening in some way rather than just observing patients. Experimental studies always need a control, whether this is in the lab, clinic or population. In a controlled trial, a group of patients who share a common characteristic, often a disease, are selected and then some of them are given the experimental intervention 
and others are not. If the experimental intervention leads to more people being cured, we might conclude that it is better than the control. However, because of the risks of other factors than the experimental intervention causing the outcome, we prefer that controlled studies be randomized. Randomization is the strongest study design to establish a causal relationship between one variable and another. Secondary research, rather than going out and collecting data at the patient level, instead gathers primary studies together and uses their results. Systematic reviews are the most common form of this. The Cochrane collaboration has led the way in establishing much of the methodology around systematic reviews and disseminating them to clinicians and patients. Systematic reviews use systematic and transparent methods to identify as many studies as they possibly can that answer the research question of interest. So they may want to take one study and extract the results, but they'll hopefully find another study, and another, and another and so on until they have exhausted all of the studies that are out there and extracted all the data. When the results from the individual studies allow it, they may be combined in what is called a meta-analysis. So that's a very rapid run-through of different study designs.